few supplements have sparked as much interest over the last few years as Fatty 15. Fatty 15 is a dietary supplement that contains a unique ingredient called C15. But the key question, however, is does Fatty 15 really work? Well, fortunately, there is some research on Fatty 15, and the results of those studies is what I'm going to show you here. By the way, this is an unbiased review, so do share it with your friends. I have been investigating dietary supplement research for over 30 years, and I don't work for any supplement company or pharmaceutical company either. At the heart of the claims and benefits of Fatty 15 is a unique saturated fatty acid called pentadecanoic acid, abbreviated as C15. C15 is found naturally in whole fat dairy as well as some fish and also some vegetable foods as well. Now while the traditional advice would be to avoid saturated fat, the makers of Fatty 15, they're called Serafina Therapeutics, they point to research showing that people who have higher levels of C15 actually have lower levels of heart disease. And if you look at the website for the company that makes this supplement, they say it works because it targets receptors that are involved in healthy metabolism, brain health, red blood cell health, liver health, and giving people an overall well-balanced immune response. Other claims made by the company include that Fatty 15 improves mitochondrial function and provides three times the cellular benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. And they even compare its anti-aging benefits to that of metformin and rapamycin. With all those benefits, no wonder that Fatty 15 is a rather pricey supplement clocking in about $50 per bottle. And if you decide to try it for yourself, take Notice that all price options also come with a subscription. Now, if you go to the company's website that makes this supplement, you'll notice that they list an impressive number of clinical trials in support of this supplement. I counted about 139 if I counted correctly. That said, I do want to point out that most of the clinical trials you see are not specifically on the Fatty 15 supplement itself. Several of the papers were indeed conducted by the founder and CEO of the company that makes Fatty 15, and I don't consider that necessarily a bad thing because I I personally like it when supplement companies pump money into their supplement because that's something that most companies don't do. However, when I looked at those papers, none of them were actually human clinical trials. And because we're not lab animals or cells in a petri dish, I'm not going to discuss them here. Instead, let's just look at the studies where humans took C15 supplements and what happened to them. Let's begin with this study that came out in 2024. In this study, which was partially funded by the Fatty 15 company, 30 young overweight adults who had at least one sign of metabolic syndrome but who were not yet diagnosed with diabetes were given 200 milligrams a day of C15 or a placebo daily for 12 weeks. And they divided the people such that 20 people took the supplement and 10 people took a placebo. And for those who are curious, they report in the paper that individuals took the Fatty 15 supplement in the morning. Results, no surprise, those who were taking the C15 supplement saw significant rises in C15 in their plasma. The placebo takers, however, saw no such improvements. And while that's good, the larger question is, did taking C15 do anything meaningful? Not really. Compared to measurements taken at the beginning of the study and changes that were seen in the placebo group, those taking C15 supplements saw no meaningful changes in body weight, body mass index, their blood sugar didn't change, no change in insulin or inflammation levels, their hemoglobin didn't change, and their liver enzymes AST and ALT didn't change either. The only thing that was reported that was beneficial was a reduction in gamma GT, which is a liver enzyme. Gamma GT declined by about 11 points. However, I think that may have something more to do with the fact that gamma GT increased in those taking the placebo rather than a direct effect of Fatty 15 lowering Gamma GT. Translation, I'm not convinced that Gamma GT is significantly lowered by taking Fatty 15 supplements. Now, if you read this study, they do state that when they drilled down further into the data, they did see improvements in hemoglobin and the liver enzymes AST and ALT. However, that was only seen in those people who had blood levels of C15 of greater than five micrograms per milliliter. And while that's interesting, they only saw this in about half the people who were taking this C15 supplement. For me, that's not enough data to conclusively say that taking C15 supplements improves hemoglobin or liver enzymes. On the plus side, however, no serious side effects were reported. Next up is this paper, which they call the TANGO trial, and don't ask why they call it the TANGO trial. Regardless, it's a 12-week study involving 88 women in China who are generally healthy but have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The women are randomized into three groups. There's a low-calorie Mediterranean diet that is also combined with 300 milligrams of C15 
15. There's a low calorie Mediterranean group alone. And then there's another group that eats what they want and they get some diet counseling. Okay, so what happened here? So results show that people eating the Mediterranean diet meals lost about nine pounds or eight kilograms and also lost about 30% of the fat from their liver after three months. So in other words, their non-alcoholic fatty liver disease improved. The control group that ate what they want and got some healthy eating counseling, they also lost some weight, but it was less than those who were consuming the Mediterranean frozen diet meals. So far, so good. But what about the people who consumed the Mediterranean meals and took C15 supplements? It's reported that fatty 15 supplements do in fact raise C15 levels, and that's to be expected. C15 also appears to promote some changes in the microbiome, but whatever that means requires further study. They also state that those using the supplement saw a greater decline in LDL compared to those who use the Mediterranean diet by itself. But here's where I see a problem. They don't actually share with us the before and after LDL data so we can judge for ourselves how much fatty 15 lowered LDL and I think that's a missed opportunity. Based on what I can see, however, I'm going to estimate that the decline in LDL was about 10%. As for the other results, well, they do show this table of results, but good luck trying to figure that out. So to make things easier, I tweaked this table a little bit to make it more user friendly. As you can see from this table, other than raising C15, fatty 15 supplements didn't seem to significantly lower body weight, body fat, blood pressure, didn't help people sleep better or improve their mental wellness any better than those just eating a Mediterranean style diet. Share these results with your friends so they know this information too, but in short, the research on fatty 15 is intriguing, but I remain unconvinced for the moment. For me, it's gonna take more than two human clinical trials with debatable results to get me to add this to a supplement regimen. Keep in mind that both of these clinical trials also use higher levels of fatty 15 that is recommended on the Serafina Therapeutics website. This is already an expensive supplement. If you're gonna to try to achieve the results seeing these studies, you're gonna pay even more for it.